Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to Coffee in the Word. I'm a little delayed this morning. I've been I've been watching TV, so anyway. Oh, that's good. I'm drinking out of one of my dad's mugs again. Uh, this was actually from a set, so I've got eight of these, so good stuff. Oh. All right. Well, as I said yesterday, oh, well, first, let me start off. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray you're all doing well and staying safe and all that good stuff. Um, turning to uh, the Lord will answer this uh, daily devotional in the, you know, it's right from the uh, Luther's uh, small catechism. Uh, it is Friday, July 17th. And it is also. If I could get to the page here, that'd be just awesome. Get my fingers working this morning. <laughs> uh, it's Friday. It's the sixth week of uh, Pentecost. And, there, and this book is starting a new study um, uh, concerning prayer. And uh, this is the first one. So we're going to start right from the beginning with prayer. It's Friday, Pentecost 6. And it says, uh, what privilege and command does God give to those who believe in Jesus Christ? And scripture, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. And that's Matthew 7, 7 through 8, 7 and 8. And then, then it says, uh, be joyful always. Pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And that is 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. It says, we believe that God commands and invites believers in Jesus Christ to pray. Note, the tolling of church, church bells, the tolling of church bells is a call to pray at Sunday worship, uh, a death or other occasions. Pause for prayer in moments of need or bereavement. Let us pray. O Lord our God, teach us, we beg you, to ask you right for all for the right blessings. Steer the vessel of our life towards yourself. O tranquil haven of all storm-tossed souls, show us the course wherein we should go. Renew a willing spirit within us. Let your spirit curb our wayward senses and guide and enable us that which that which is our true good to keep your laws and in all all our works evermore to rejoice in your glorious and gladdening presence for yours is the glory and praise from all your saints forever and ever amen and we'll continue that uh, little study in prayer uh, tomorrow and then eventually it gets into the lord's prayer and the different uh, petitions in that and so that ought to be interesting. Let's see what the, now going to the treasury of daily prayer. Once again, it's July the 17th. And the psalmody today is Psalm 92, verses 8 through 15. And as always, may God bless the reading of his word. But you, O Lord, are on high forever. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All evildoers shall be scattered. But you have exalted my horn like that of the wild ox. You have poured over me fresh oil. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my, of my evil assailants. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like the cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are full they are ever full of sap and green to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Get a little coffee here. Throat's dry. You know, since that Saharan dust came in, my throat has just been so dry. Oh. So, the Old Testament lesson. We're going to 1 Samuel of uh, uh, first samuel chapter 1 verses 1 through 20 and here we go oh excuse me i did not sleep too good last night so all right here we go there was a certain man of 
Ramathaim Zophim, of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zuf, and Ephra, uh, and, um, hang on, and Ephrathite. He had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Peneha. Penina, Penina, that's it. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Now this man used to go up year by year from this city, from his city, to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of Hosts at Shiloh, where the two sons of of Eli, Hophni and Phineas, were priests of the Lord. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to Penina. Penina, his wife, and to her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival used to provoke her grievously to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year by year. As often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? And why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah rose. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting at the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, If you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant, and remember me, and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. And she continued praying before the Lord. Ei observed her, her mouth. Hannah was speaking in her heart, only her lips moved, and her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli took her to be a drunken woman, and Eli said to her, How long will you go on being drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered, No, my lord, I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a, as, as a worthless woman, for all along I have been speaking, speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation. And Eli answered, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. And he said, Let let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah, and Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And in due time Hannah conceived and bore a son, And she called his name Samuel, for she said, I have asked for him from the Lord. That's a great story. And incidentally, I have a daughter named Hannah, and uh, this is where we got her name. My other, uh, my youngest daughter's name is Chloe, and uh, we got her name from the Old Testament. And um, uh, there was a woman named Chloe who was uh, letting the Apostle Paul know what was going on in the church in uh, I believe it was Corinth and uh, so he said though she said she came to him said this was what's going on and that's how we came to get first and uh, second Corinthians I believe it was Corinthians I so but uh, anyway that's that's where we got them and my other two children Taylor and Dylan uh, we found their names on some TV show we liked so (laughs) anyway The New Testament reading. Um, we're in Galatians still, Galatians 5, 1 through 26. And here we go. For freedom, Christ set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. You are severed from Christ, you 
who would be justified by the law, you have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly await for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. You were running well. Who hindered, who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in the Lord that you will take no other view than mine, and the one who is troubling you will bear the penalty, whoever he is. But if I, brothers, still preach circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been removed. I wish those who unsettle you would emasculate themselves. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. And this is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Merciful God, for freedom you have set us free through Christ's liberating death and resurrection. In this freedom, teach us to live in the fruit of the Spirit given, given us in our baptism, that we may bear in our bodies the fulfillment of the law as we love our neighbors as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, like I said, I hope and pray you're all doing well and hope you're hope you're safe and all that good stuff. And uh, oh, it's Friday. Happy Friday. Have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you tomorrow. Well, I'll coffee in the word. So be safe, be blessed and be happy. Bye bye. God bless.